All right, all right, all right. Strangely, it feels like I've kind of been doing this for a little while, or that I haven't done this in a little while, and whatnot, but yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Master Sarmaran, and welcome to tonight's stream. This is going to be the start of the last of four Metroid games we are going to be covering tonight, which is going to be Metroid Fusion. I am going to be kind of just once again playing this on the Wii U like I did with Zero Mission here. And I need to reset this, which I need to... Do I really need the gamepad for this right now? If I can even find my gamepad. Um. Oh wait, hold on. Uh... Can I do anything here on the... Uh, no, I cannot use... I need to find it and find my gamepad here before, so I can reset this here, unless there's some other option that I'm not seeing here. I thought closing it would have sent me back to the... menu there. Of course, this is starting off on a really rough... Hmm. I'm not sure where my Wii U gamepad is. What kind of tech issues did you experience there, Ardo? <clears throat> My gamepad's just turning on right now. I'll just need it in a sec. Oh, okay, it's on. Uh, close. Or Actually, that wasn't what I meant to do, but... We can get this going here in a second, and honestly, I might even just play off the gamepad, honestly. I do find the gamepad oddly comfortable. <sighs> what were you streaming last night? More Final Fantasy VII, I think? Okay, let's try all this again here, and I should probably actually play that opening movie there, so reset the game a third time. Nintendo presents... Metroid 4.
Uh oh. That was a very ominous start there. Okay, so these are my save files from when I did my let's play of the game, actually. Um... I'm just gonna race over... I don't know what the fudge... Oh, I know what this save file was here. Okay, I'm gonna race over my top one here. Um... Yeah, um... This save file, I'm pretty sure... I was wondering why this only had, like, half the progress and, like, the same time as the... Um... My 100% file from the Let's Play, but this file was... Uh, for me watching one of my cousins play this game a couple years ago. He played about halfway through and then found it a little tricky, so... Anyways, um... I think if I start... Yeah, if I hit start over here on a complete save file, I believe that does activate New Game Plus there. And I think there's a few differences with that. I mean, assigned to watch over the Biologics Research Team. Once again, I found myself on the surface of SR388. A oh, little continuity nod to a game that came out after this. It was there that I was attacked by a life form I had never encountered before. It was only later that I learned the identity of my attacker, the parasitic organism we now know as X. Unaware of my condition, I was returning to the station when disaster struck. Once the X had infested my central nervous system, I lost consciousness and my ship drifted into an asteroid belt. The ship's emergency system automatically injected, e ejected the escape pod before impact. Biologics vessels recovered it and transported me to the Galactic Federation headquarters. However, during the journey, the X multiplied within me, corrupting large areas of my power suit. It then came into light that the organic components of my power suit become so integrated with my system that it could not be removed while I was unconscious. Large portions of my suit had to be surgically removed, dramatically altering my physical appearance. However, the X in my central nervous system were too embedded to be removed safely. I was given a minimal chance of survival. Then, someone found a cure. They proposed using Metroid cell to make an anti vax <sighs> Anti-X vaccine. God, here I go again, about to get my Twitch count banned for saying these V words here. It seems that the Federation had managed to preserve a cell culture from the last infant Metroid from SR388. Oh, so Junior's really given us some life after all here. The serum was prepared and injected without delay. The X parasites were immediately and completely destroyed. This is how useful vaccines are. <laughs> As for me, once one life ended, yet yeah, I survived, reborn, as something different. Pondering this fact, I realize I owe them that 
the Metroid hatchling my life twice over. You'll soon be arriving at the BSL research station. I must prepare for docking. The ship's computer has notified me of our approach to the Biologic Space Labs, or BSL research station, during my surgery. The research team sent the last batch of creatures we captured there, as well as the infected pieces of my power suit. After regaining consciousness, I learned that an unexplained explosion rocked the station. For some reason, this awoke a nameless fear in my heart, and now I'm being sent there to investigate. My mission on BSL station will be overseen by my new ship's computer. Following the commands of this blunt computer ICO is something I have to bear, as it was a condition of my of my taking this ship. For someone who dislikes taking orders, this is the second time I've found myself having to do so. It makes me recall my other CO. We won't talk about that right now. <laughs> There's been an explosion in the quarantine bay. The bay currently stores capsules containing recent samples from SR388 as well as parts of your suit infected by the X parasites. The cause of the explosion is yet unclear. Investigate. The quarantine bay is here. Move quickly and quietly. You are still unable to use most of your latent abilities. Don't forget that, Samus. Stop at the navigation room along the way. Uplink from there. Is your objective clear? Yes. Now go to the quarantine bay. There we go, after a pretty lengthy degree of plot exposition there, we're finally beginning up here. This is Metroid Fusion for early Game Boy Advance, released in 2002, pretty much right around the same time as Metroid Prime, and right off the bat I gotta say, I freaking love this game. I'll talk more about it, kind of I'm sure, as we go along here, but man I love this game. Um, not that we can do anything here, but I think this does kind of give us a look at things to come down that way there. And... Okay, you know what? Let me actually modify my controls here just to be a little bit more akin to what I'm used to here. Uh, not that. Um, actually wait. Ah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine with full screen there, um... And... controller settings... Sorry, I just thought about doing this here, um... Okay, there we go. Now I have jump on, jump and shoot on buttons that make sense again. So, yep, we have a bunch of doors that we kind of can't do a whole lot with. So, our main goal is to head into the nav room here and explore more just story dialogue here. Quarantine bay is ahead. Bio signs are confirmed. Be careful. That was a pretty short cutscene, probably because we just had like few minutes of dialogue there. Can't really go that way now. Cause yeah, we don't have our morph ball here either. Hey, buddy. And touching the yellow thing didn't really do much of anything now, did it? I guess, like, one of the first things I'll point out is that this game has ledge, gr ledge guard, or ledge guard, ledge grip on by default, which I personally really like a lot. 
because that was something that was also in Zero Mission, but you had to actually unlock that ability, which kind of made that game a little bit annoying to start off with. Here is just from the start. This is unfortunate news. The specimen brought back and the field team were infected by X parasites. The X can mimic prey. Any specimen could have hosted. Before the explosion, a security sensor scanned one of the gelatinous X parasites. Oh, the, the gelatinous X parasites invade and rapidly reproduce, killing the host creatures. They also absorb DNA and use it to mimic the host. You were almost killed by an X infection. Only the Metroid vaccine saved your life. It seems the Metroids were the main predators of the X. That's why the vaccine worked so quickly and so well. And also why it was a bad idea to kill every Metroid on SR388. But it also changed your cellular makeup. You'll never be infected by X again. In fact, you can now absorb any free-floating X parasites without hosts. So basically the equivalent of this game's health system. Yep. Um... They also restore latent abilities this way, so pursue free X parasites whenever you possibly can. Station is home to many species, some violent ones. We must keep the X out of the breeding environments at all costs. This is vital, Samus. I'm already detecting this massive biosign in this region. The X are gathering. This may be our chance to exterminate them, but you are only at 10% battle capacity. Chance of survival is extremely low. The Federation needs you alive and on duty, Samus. Yes, our objective is clear. Let's get going. And this is, in fact, the way I want to go here. Because I think now this... Yeah, this door's open here. And we can't do anything about green doors at all here. Um, got a save room here, thankfully. trying to load up an old map I have saved on here from, like, years ago. Um, not that I think I'm going to need it right yet, but it's sometime down the line I may end up needing this, so... Anyways, over this way, if the camera can pan here, there's just a zombie. There's a thing we can't really do a whole lot with. Fortunately, the zombies die in one hit, which is very nice. And we got another nav room here. I received news from headquarters. They can support you with downloadable weapon data. Once you have this data, you'll be able to use missiles. If you get some enemies, your beam can't hurt. Head to the data room for a free download. This area, this is kind of odd because, and we'll talk more about this as the game goes on here, but a lot of your power-ups are kind of just downloaded from the Federation, and they don't really want to give you a whole lot of your weapons. They're kind of just jerks like that. So, we'll get more into that as kind of the game goes on, because I know that's kind of a heavily debated thing behind this game, but... That computer reminds me of Rough Federation COI server, the name Adam Malkovich. He called me Lady on Missions for anyone else, it would have sounded like sarcastic, but Adam made it sound dignified. Of respect, with some irony, I named the computer after him. Interesting. Anyways, um, I believe down below is a... I, I can show this off here. I think this is a health room and a save room, I want to say. Yeah. One thing I will give Metro Fusion some credit for is that there's a lot of just health and ammo stations and save stations kind of scattered about. It's a lot more streamlined in that regard than kind of how traditional Metroid games were. So for that, I do actually quite like that. And here's our data room where we download missiles. Very, very nice. Very nice. And what was that? Electrical interference has knocked out the elevators on the main deck. This may be related to the X. I'll work on it. As for you, try and find another way to target. 
It's over here. I'm reading huge bio signs, so up your missiles to reload your missiles. You can use a recharge room or absorb. Special type of X parasite, you'll see them. They're the green variants. Now find a way to the target. Yeah, let's us do that. There's also a room up here where we can't access it, and it also has a red door. Um, and I also can't wall jump off that for some reason. This game does have wall jumping in it, but it is a little bit different than how Zero Mission and uh, Zero Mission and uh, Super Metroid handle it. So that is something to kind of. Uh, in mind, which I know Zero Mission came, like, after this game, but still. Anyways, we can also climb on these here, which is pretty cool. And if we fall down here, there's just a missile here. And if we head over here, there is another missile here. This game gives you a lot of of collectibles, and I mean a lot. You do not need half the freaking crap this game gives you. But I don't really mind that at the same time. It's definitely, because this game can be pretty tough without that as it is. So, I've often compared this to kind of Majora's Mask in some ways where it can be pretty tough, like, if you're just not sure where things are and whatnot, and you won't know where half the crap is in this game on your first playthrough, but on revisits, whenever you do kind of, like, go back through and explore a lot of these areas, like, this game's a lot, like, simpler than I think a lot of people make it out to be. Uh, the red parasites there, you pretty much will only see those from these boss doors, and those give, like, a lot of health and missiles. And if I head down this way, there is, in fact, an energy tank here. Very, very nice. Now, where is it? There is a secret in this wall here. I'm trying to find it. Okay, seriously, where's this freaking secret at? Seriously, I know there's a secret in this wall here. Where the fudgio is this at? There we freaking go. I knew there was a secret in this wall here somewhere. And yeah, it's very important to get that because that's a second energy tank right off the bat. That makes this game a lot more tolerable to start off with if you do find this game pretty tough. That's kind of an example of what I mean where you won't know where some stuff is whenever you start off. Also, hey, it's this guy. He's definitely received a makeover since his Metro 2 days. And got him. 
And for beating every boss in this game, you basically have to fight this ex-parasite orb thing. And it's pretty much after literally every boss fight in this game that you have to do something like that. Not the most fun thing in the world, but you'll get used to fighting those things. Anyways, morph ball time. Morph ball's definitely alright. can't go... come on. Can go up? Oh yeah, I guess we can go up this way. I don't think this is much of anything. Oh, it's just a recharge room. Uh, I'll fill up my two missiles. Yeah, Arachnus is kind of a, a little bit of a joke in this game, but I actually I wouldn't even say that. He can be pr like kind of tricky if you're not used to kind of how this game's bosses kind of go, which... I also want to say this game might have some of the most bosses out of any Metroid game, actually. There's a fair number in Super Metroid as well, but, like, this game, I think, might have some of the most bosses out of any game in the series, I think. Anyways, let's see what Adam has to say about all that. Samus, it's as I feared. The breeding environments have been invaded by ex-parasites. Sector 1, SRX, shows several abnormalities. Sector 1 is a simulation of SR388 ecosystem. To get there, take the main elevator to access the shaft and use Elevator 1. Is your objective clear? Yes. There's an Avrom just inside for further briefing. I'm not sure. I think that whoever allowed the exit into the environment may have also been linked to the earlier explosion. Things are not looking too good right now. That is true, yeah. Like, that is a f Oh, shoot, I did not realize that was where that was. <laughs> Can't go in there because that's another side of our things um, that I don't think the game's told us about yet. Uh, we're weak to ice right now because Samus is being injected with Metroid DNA. We will pretty much die stepping into any frozen Wonderland. Doesn't matter how many times I play this game, that cutscene will forever be. Just. Ugh, it's good. It is so good. And we got a map here. Very nice. Usually, every sector you go to, you get a map to start. The main elevator leading to the access shaft has been severely damaged. It will be totally unusable for some time, unfortunately. Some unknown agent is at work. Something very powerful, certainly not human. I'll report when I know more. Now listen carefully. The X and Sector 1 have invaded the atmospheric stabilizers. They must want to alert the environments to their needs. They're already reproducing. Clear all five atmospheric stabilizers and stop them. Yep, we can definitely do that. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll save here. I probably won't use the recharge room up ahead, but it's definitely not something... something fine there. Alright. Got some doors we can't really do much with. One real way to go here, I guess. Let me get away from that thing, please. 
Uh, welcome there, uh, grandson Brambo. And yeah, we're playing some Metroid Fusion today. This is my personal favorite 2D Metroid game. I guess I could talk a little bit. Well, first of all, we have some of these stabilizers here. This is kind of what our objective is for this area for now. I guess I could talk about kind of when I first played this game. Um, I remember back in, this would have been about 2010-ish, probably around the time Other M came out, although I don't think that, I think that was just probably just pure coincidence, but I guess to give you an idea kind of on time, like time frame. Uh, by the way, here's another energy tank. <laughs> Um, I ended up just getting, like, really... I, I think I, I had already, like, played Prime a lot in the last, like, year and a half leading up to that point, and I had watched Let's Plays of, um, Super Metroid and Zero Mission, especially Zero Mission, when I first tried that earlier on in that year, and I heard, I had heard several things about, um, Fusion as well, um, and I think I saw a review of it and kind of just got, just got interested of in playing that. And I remember finding it awkward at first, but something really clicked with me about this game after that first kind of experience with it. And I ended up playing it like a second time very shortly afterwards. Um, trying to see which way I want to go here. I think this is I think we're fine just to keep going here because I think everything else kind of loops back around. So we got space pirates, that's definitely fun. So the X mimicked those things. I can see that. There are some other missiles in that area, but nothing we can get yet and nothing we can get for a very long time. Yeah, I, I, I really do like Samus Returns for, like, the feel of it, but I will say, replaying it, I do think it being on 3DS is a little bit awkward for me, and also, um, like, yeah, if I was playing this game on, like, an original GBA, I'd maybe feel similarly, but at least I can play this game on a bigger screen here, with a much more comfortable controller. I'm playing this on the, the Wii U by the way, just to kind of clarify that. Another one of these here. And I don't need to fall down this way here, but I'm sure it works. Just something about this game clicked with me a lot. This way here. Yeah, here's just a missile here. It has been a couple years since I last played this game besides watching one of my cousins play this game, which even that I feel like was a while ago. Like that was pre-pandemic and I know in this day and age it almost feels like that's been going on for forever at this point, so... boss door here, and I hate this wall with a burning passion, but more on that later. <laughs> I know there's a save room down here. 
There's a secret in this area, which I can't really show off right now because I don't have bombs or anything to break open a wall, but there's a lot of really stupid secrets in this area. I'm just going to throw that out there. And we have another of these guys here. I want to say these guys have basically just random patterns, whether or not they'll attack you or not. And... You deceive me! Yeah, we got this guy here. And he likes to shoot at us whenever we shoot at him. Although, I guess, can you exactly blame him? Took a lot of cheap pot shots there, but that's basically it there. Anyways, charge beam down. Really simple boss fight, but... We're gonna have to get used to fighting those things a lot. There's also something in the ceiling there, too, that we need to come back for a lot later. I think playing on a New Game Plus file will help me, because I'll be able to see exactly, kind of how many collectibles I have in each area here, um, if it'll show that, I mean, well, it shows how many in total we have, but not how many we have in each area, but, anyways, I want to say there's something here, indeed I was right. In fact, a missile here. Knowing this game, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another secret in this area somewhere. Uh, actually, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> this is actually called Elephant Bird because of a translation. I, I did not know that. That's kind of funny. And all stabilizers are online. Very nice. I do also just like the effect of the fog, like, clearing up a lot here whenever you turn the stabilizers on. Very, very nice. And yeah, this is pretty much the back side of that one area. Um, I don't know if we can get this here or not yet. Mm, probably not. Also, I'm getting the wall jumping messed up badly here now. Or, hold on. Okay, can I get this with the... Pro controller here. I'm determined, damn it. I think I can make this here. What? I'm looking at my map here, and this is just for a missile, but. I'm determined to get this here, damn it. I can see I can get it, it's just... Am I skilled enough, is my question. Nice! Oh, thank god. That was still somehow... harder than other things were in some other Metroid games, but also... Yeah. Also, I guess on a random note of the time I first played this game here, 
I seem to recall it being the same day I first played Call of Duty Black Ops, which is just such a random memory to have. Like, I think it was the same day that a friend showed me that, and we, we played that a lot, and I think it snowed, like, that whole afternoon, if I remember right. I might have played some other random games that afternoon, too. It was, I, I generally look back fondly on that point in my life there, and... I think I talked about it in some videos at the time, like I was I was let's playing Mario Sunshine then, and I'm pretty sure I talked about it in some of the videos by then. Like I think it was it was it must have been in one of the Peanut Park videos of that LP, I think. And then by the time I was like finishing up in Serena Beach, which was you know, the next world of that game, I'm pretty sure that was when I had already done my second playthrough, which was like my 100 percent run of that game. I'm just, just stuff I remember about that game sometimes. Anyways, I probably don't need this right now, but I'll take it anyway, I guess. Atmospheric stabilizers online. Many X have already made it to other sectors, it seems, in particular. Sector 2, Tro is a tropical habitat. Spect X has entered the sector with the help of uh, our unseen saboteur. He or it may be in TRO now. So you must get over there, we must put an end to this. Yes, let us head there. Start moving, I'll brief you at the Tropical Navarum. <laughs> Whatever it is, is definitely not nice. I mean, we've seen it kind of already, but... As I listened to the briefing, my thoughts turned to Adam. The real Adam understood me well, and cued end orders by saying, Any objections, lady? He knew I wouldn't disagree. That was just his way of noting our trust. I wonder if he can if I can trust this computer too. Ah, <sighs> hold that thought for another day, Samus. <laughs> I have learned the identity of our mysterious saboteur. Samus, it's an X mimicking you. I've named it the SAX. I believe the SAX came from the capsule containing your infected suit parts and used a power bomb to escape the quarantine bay. That explosion breached the capsules containing all the X that started this disaster. The SAX is definitely our biggest worry right now. The SAX is mimicking you at full power. You can't face it. If you see the SAX, just run. Don't even think about fighting. You're still very vulnerable to cold and unexpected side effect of the Metroid vaccine. Like Metroids, you can be frozen by an ice beam. Of course, the SAX is armed with the ice beam. Stay away. If you see it, just run. Headquarters say they have bomb data ready in the data room. Bombs will help you find a way out of the SAX traps you. Data is still here, but it's sealed by a level 1 hatch. You'll have to find the security room and release the level 1 locks. For safety protocols, it's not marked on the map. You'll have to find it on your own somehow, Samus. So first find the security room, unlock level 1 hatches, and then go the bomb data. Is your objective clear? Yes. Yeah, so this game... This game really does just kind of ramp things up to 11 here. We know that it's... There's a clone of us at full power wandering the station and could basically show up at any given moment. So... What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, it would be kind of nice if we got some little dialogue pieces like that. Anyways, if we head up here... So 
dark blue doors here, which we should be able to do some stuff with here very shortly. Such as right now. The hatches are open! There's a very random reference that was popping into my head for the last minute. <laughs> There's a few things in that area there, but nothing we can get for now. There's also something over that way, too, that we also just can't get right now, either. It's kind of funny, because I have, I have a lot more thoughts to kind of say on a lot of the things that have kind of been going on here, but I am kind of just going to... Like, wait, what? I thought there was a. Maybe I need bombs for that there then. I'm pretty sure there is a secret over this way here, but. Yeah, maybe I just need bombs for that there. It's not too often there's pointless hallways like that. And which way do I want to go? I want to say this upper path I can't do anything with. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I need... I'm pretty sure I need, like, speed booster and something else. Yeah... I might be able to do something here. We have some tougher looking enemies here. <sighs> I don't want to chance it there. These things kind of hurt a bit, and I don't think I have a way of jumping over them for right now. We'll be able to get done with those things by the end of this area, I'm pretty sure, so. And fun fact, there was one time a couple years ago where, uh, basically from this point onward, like, I had a save file basically saved right here, which I still think is kind of basically the beginning of the game. I basically just decided to binge the entire rest of the game from then on that afternoon. I was not doing a damn thing that summer, but yeah, that is a true thing that happened. <laughs> and we can now use this data room here and get bombs. Bombs? That did not sound good at all. They threw. Want my missiles. <laughs> also, yeah, I want to point out something I really love that this game does, and I think this is the first Metroid to do this. Uh, if you notice on our map here, it shows... If there's an item that you have yet to collect, it shows a big round circle on the map there. And if it's an item you have collected, like the room I'm in right now, it shows just like a little square dot there. I really like that change a lot. That's something that does feel antiquated going back to Super Metroid and the Metroid games before that didn't even have a map feature. Like, that's something I really do love about this game a lot. And yeah, we can just kind of head down this way here. It basically, it's such a nice quality of life update. Yeah, it's as far as I know, Super Metroid, if there was an item in the area, it just showed a square dot. It didn't really show if you collected it or, or not, which... I can't fault it too much, because it was one of the first games in that style, but... Yeah, I do find that a little jank going back. There's a thing here. I don't think I can get this unless I can just do a really well-timed wall jump or something here. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think... I've heard some people describe this as possible to get, but I don't... 
quite see how... Like, getting this early, because this missile is otherwise kind of a pain in the ass to get, because, yeah, it's really, really out of the way from, like, the point where you can... Even if I could wall jump, I don't think that would help me in any way here. I doubt I can do it on the Pro Controller here. Yeah, I straight up can't really wall jump off that there. I'm gonna rule this missile as... <sighs> I, I feel like there is a trick to being able to get this early, but it's not really... If there is, I'm not really sure what it is necessarily. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna rule this as... And, you know what, sure, I'll just... Controller for a bit. Why not? This I do like this controller quite a bit, so why not? I guess. Well, if I'm switching the controllers like three times throughout this year. Man, I should probably also plug my phone in now that I'm thinking about it. Can I not die here, please? Okay. Um, well, earlier on, I had to reset the game, and I disabled the, like, I had to grab the gamepad in order to do that. Um, I also just do like the layout of the gamepad, though, in some ways as well. Um, I don't mind the Pro Controller either, though, so. And again, this is a Wii U game, not a, well, I think, yeah, you knew that, but that's, like, what I'm playing this on is the Wii U, not the Switch, so. I don't mind this Pro Controller, though, either. It's, it is kind of funny. I didn't buy a Wii U Pro Controller for the longest time, just because for most games I was playing, like, say, Mario Kart or Smash or even, like, Mario 3D World and some other Wii U games, they were all back compatible with the classic controllers and everything, so I really didn't see much point to buying, like, a... Buying, like, a, um... These things take a million hits to kill here. I would like some health here, but I'll, I'm gonna get some from this guy. There's also a secret in this area here. I can find it here. Is it here? Yes. Yeah, I didn't get a, a Wii U Pro Controller until... I want to say it was around the time Twilight Princess HD came out. I don't remember why I bought one. I just kind of bought one on a whim. I think there's... Isn't there like a steel beam or something that's supposed to help you here? Yeah, that's what I thought. Meanwhile, the Switch Pro Controller I got, like, when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out, and that was April of 2017, so literally a month after the Switch came out. Um, I don't think this way leads to much of anything here. Uh, maybe like a save room or something, I wouldn't mind that, I guess. Yeah. Actually, if there's one thing I do like about the Wii U Pro Controller, it's extremely lightweight. And I actually really like it for that a lot. 
this room is definitely very ominous looking. Totally not important for later, no sorry. Is there anything over here? No. This room... <sighs> I can't remember, I don't think I can get the items in that right now, there's a couple things in there. I might be able to get one of them here in the very near future. Um, this room I don't think leads to much of, nah, I don't think that leads to too much of anything there. Sorry, I don't mean to rely on the map for, like, every little thing right now, but... Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure I need to just kind of go this- go the way I was just down. It actually feels kind of crazy to think the Wii U turns 10 next year. Really, that wouldn't work. Why wouldn't I'm surprised that wouldn't work for something like uh, like Mario Kart or something. Here is an energy tank, which is very well by me. And I think this is actually, yep, this way leads down to the boss here. One thing to say, Wazabi's a zombie. This is a very, very weird fight. It's a very weird creature in general. Timing can definitely be a little weird, especially if you're not really used to this fight too much. And that was it there, actually. <laughs> And for beating him, we honestly get probably one of the best items in the game here. High jump and jump ball abilities recovered. We not only get what's effectively the Spring Ball from Super Metroid, which normally is a very late game item in the second area, and the High Jump. And we can jump like we're on the freaking moon with this ability here, like, this is a high, high jump here that we can make. There's also some more stuff in the upper right corner there, but we'll be back for... We'll be back for that junk in a later time, because uh, it's it's not fun, that secret area. I'll just say that, putting it very mildly. But yeah, I really do like how we get high jump and the jump ball at the same time. I don't think... The spring ball's not that super useful in this game, but it is... It's a nice item to have regardless what Metroid game it is. That's not ominous or nothing. There's also an area down here. I want to say this is, like, the pathway leading over to... Yeah, this is just that, like... If you went over this way... This would be where the boss was there, we just thought. 
All the bugs have turned to, looks like stone, so maybe something else. Oh, man, oh man. Man, that's power bomb there. Or pupate. Yep, definitely. They definitely are, and I am not looking forward to when those things hatch, and that's also not good there. the atmosphere in this game so well man they nail the atmosphere in this game so well oh man anyways um I do want to head over here because I think I can yeah I can get at least this missile I want to say we can possibly get the other one that's in this area too I could be mistaken and I want to kill these guys here here, but I want to say there's like a metal bar that can rise here. Yes. I think we can get this one. Ooh, that's gonna be a... <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're... Yeah, I don't think we're getting that one there for, like, a while. Yeah, it definitely, and this is coming from somebody who doesn't really play a whole lot of horror games, or even watch, like, a lot of horror movies, like... It's definitely, like, it definitely knows how to nail its atmosphere, and that's something that I do really love about this game. Anyways... Do I want to go back for that one missile? I I don't know when's a good time to ever do this, because, like, I usually don't go back now, and I don't know if there's a good reason for it or not, but, like, let's be honest, there's no good time to do this. If you don't do it now, then you'll be waiting, like, you'll have to do this at some point, so... Or, oh shoot, can I even make... Okay, I can make that jump. Uh, can I make this one, though? Oh, yeah, I can... T <sighs> can I please get through this here? Nope, okay, so there is a clean-cut answer. You need to get backtrack for that later on, so... Oh, damn. Yeah, that, that missile that I passed up back there is just really obnoxious. Because, again, remember the SAX? It blew up the freaking doorway leading up there from the top. So, later on, we're going to need to backtrack from, like, way down this way. All the way back up there just for one missile. And then to loop all the way back down. It's dumb. But, also this doorway is blown to smithereens now, too. Um, I don't... I think there's a whole lot we can get in this area here. Ah, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we can reach that area there. Nah, but we can definitely head out this way, though. And this guy is just perpetually blocking this doorway here that's probably for something very important. I want to say there's an, a recharge room in this area here. Maybe it's a little bit further up there. Actually, no, it's it's not in this area. It's in a different spot. Um. Okay, I see where I'm at on the map now. Never mind. What 
what there is, is an area over here. It's kind of funny, because, like, I'm not really much of a horror person very much. Like, I've... I've played through Resident Evil 4, which isn't really... I, I wouldn't really call Resident Evil 4 a horror game. It has some elements of horror, but it's not really much in the way of, like, a full-on horror game. So yeah, we can head over this way here. And there's a missile here. That's what I thought. Um, I've seen the odd horror movie here and there. I've seen... See, it's like, I'm thinking of the horror movies I've seen. Like, I've seen stuff like... The Devil's Rejects. And I remember I was telling my... I was, like, jokingly trying to get my mom to watch that at one point. She's like, Zach, no, this is a horrible movie. Like, just in, like, some of the weird, sadistic crap that goes on in that. And fair point, she's probably not wrong. I, honestly, it's been so long since I've seen that, I really don't remember it too much. It was just something that, um, some friends showed me back when we were in high school. And, like, I wasn't really phased by it too much either. I don't know if I've just seen a bunch of weird shit or something, but that movie didn't really phase me too much for some reason. Yeah, see, it's like, there's a lot of movies that I just straight up have not seen. Like, I've never seen The Conjuring, I've never seen any, like, classic horror movies, and by classic I mean both from, like, old, old days and also from, like, the 70s or 80s or anything. Anyway, Samus, we've got trouble. Releasing the security lock may have been a bad idea. The SAX has invaded the water environment in Sector 4, AQA, with several thousand X. Blue Hatch is active, the SAX slipped in easy. Creatures in the systems in Sector 4 are already showing multiple irregularities. Currently investigating... Yeah, yeah, we've been over this shtick already. Like, what other horror movies have I seen? Like... <sighs> oh, well. The SAX, an enemy with my strongest abilities. Does it have reason? Probably not. It's just a killing machine. In my current state, I can't face it head-on. The SAX is me, only heartless. I must stop it before it learns its potential and threatens the universe. It's definitely a very interesting... <laughs> ...premise for a game here. Wouldn't be the first time Samus has fought a clone, and honestly, probably not even her strongest clone either, but... Yeah, I mean, in terms of game release, it would have been the first time, so... And we got a nice big boy sector here. This sector is taking more damage than expected. I knew the X were powerful and destructive, but still, it seems to be purposeful. We certainly can't rule out the possibility of an SAX. High degree of intelligence. I find the X fascinating, especially this SAX. But I digress. This sector is home to a very large creature the researchers called Ceres. It's capable of moving and attacking at ultra-high speed. The more senseless and widespread destruction here may be attributed to Ceres. No doubt the SAX released it, but I can't be sure why. Ceres is returned often to the breeding tank here. Its natural behavior must go back to periodically. It's a valuable specimen, but you have been authorized to terminate it. If you don't, it may invade other sectors. While you're moving, be careful. Some broken power electrify the water, but we can't cut the power. Doing so would affect the whole station adversely. If you touch water, you'll be electrocuted. <laughs> Put the SAX in Smash. So, the fourth Samus and the second clone of Samus <laughs> in that game. I wouldn't complain personally, but... Yeah, that would definitely be something. Also, let's be honest, it's kind of also just Samus, let's be real. Like, one-to-one, -one, all its main capabilities are just Samus's, it's just... It doesn't have a good... trend of thought there. Anyways, um... If we head down this way, we can see a glimpse for the future here. Yeah. 
Yeah, really. We can't do anything about that, like, bottom path, and we won't be able to do anything for a very long time. I will mention, um, two things. One, this I think is the only sector where we won't really need to backtrack too, too much, which is very nice. Um... And two... I have kind as much as I love Metroid Fusion, I feel like I mention this, like, almost every time I play this game at this point. As much as I love this game, I gotta say, it has a weak soundtrack as a whole, and I'm not saying this lightly here, I really do love the rest of this game, and it does have, like, excel a lot in the atmosphere parts, I think this is just a save room here. But, this game's soundtrack, I gotta say, it's... It's pretty weak, and this is like one of maybe two songs in the game I'd say I actually like. And I I hate saying that, because I really do love this game a lot. But, I do find it does have a kind of weak soundtrack. I know there's a... Yeah, there we go. Hold on. I know there's a thing up here. Where is this? Is it right here? There we go. And I want to say I can go through here. To or actually, no, it's over this way. It has been a couple years since I've played this game, but I've played it a lot that some stuff is still kind of familiar to me. And yeah, see, we're already up to 80 missiles right now. So... I think the upper path we need to backtrack down to warp from down, so... I only really just bring up the soundtrack thing, because this is like one of the very few songs that I actually would say I kind of like, and even then, I find it doesn't really stick out too much to me, but like, I do... I kind of just like the way it sounds a little bit. Um... If there's anything much in this area here... I knew that was going to happen, and these guys hurt like hell here. Let me get out of this. Like, honestly, I'd say this has to probably be my weak, the, probably the weakest soundtrack out of almost any Metroid game, if I'm being honest, which is... Kind of a shame, because usually I do like a lot of the music in Metroid games. I was actually listening to some Metroid remixes in Smash Bros. the other day, and I found out the... Um... Is there something in this area here? Oh, okay, yeah, actually, I know where this area is now. Yeah, that's definitely very nice. This is another one of those games I do not regret using a guide when going through, because... Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Um, I kind of just hope we get, like, a good soundtrack out of Dread, because I know that's... They're probably going to go for more of, like, a... Maybe a... Like, a horror aesthetic with that as well, because that game's looking to be this game on steroids from what we've seen, and I cannot wait for that, but... Yeah, I don't know. 
anyways. So fun fact, in my let's play, I originally missed this missile on this run through of the sector here. And when I did like the whole end of game backtrack that's typical of most Metroid games, that was the only thing I missed in this sector. So yeah, you pretty much don't need to go back here for much of anything, which I do kind of like. At least there's one area in the game you just don't need to revisit very much. Also, I'm pretty sure this wall here stumped me when I was when I first played this game because I guess I didn't know that I could go over this way. I think this was like the first one of the first parts I really got stuck at. It wouldn't have been for long anyway, because I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure I beat this game within like a weekend. But so come on. Enemies not blindside me, please and thank you. And for heading all the way up here. Just in fact, a save room and a crack in the save room here. That was one big ass fish. My Twitch chat is asking me to choose a Pokemon. Um, the Sam. I guess maybe Tentacool. I guess I'm trying to think of what would probably suit Samus the most, and I don't know what I would think of otherwise. I'm kind of confused by that question there. Just a little bit. So yeah, this freaking Eidor here kind of sucks here, because uh, he's in water, and it is possible to jump over his shots, which is very nice, but... He's not really too fun. But we are given just enough time to jump over him there. And... Here we go, the Ceres. This fight is kind of something else. It's also incredibly freaking fast, and I take way more hits against this guy than I probably should. Yeah, I feel like this is probably the way to stand there. This fight can definitely be a little tricky, because, again, this guy is fast as all hell, and do I need to say any anything else? Definitely, I think, the most fearsome creature we've seen so far besides, obviously, the SAX, but... Instead of all the bosses, this one's definitely, I think, one of the cooler designs. And it's now dead. We had to put an innocent creature out of commission, because... Parasite got out of hand. It would be interesting if there was like another Ceres species somewhere else. Maybe Dread might have some ties into that. And you'd think we would get Gravity Suit because of all the water stuff here, but uh... Speed Booster. Oh, I still have... Oh. Yeah, I I did set up that at one point. Um, I was st I streamed Battle Revolution earlier this summer, and I haven't changed. I, I still don't really know what to do with like my Twitch. Like, I, I 
I keep wanting to say bits, but they're not bits, but like the, um, like the channel points. I have no sweet idea what to really do with some of those there. I kind of forgot I had that set up there just because it's been probably almost two months since I finished Battle Revolution now. Kind of crazy how fast time's flying here. But you know what? Time's flying and that only means we're getting closer and closer to Dread Day. I should set up my channel points for something. I just don't really have too many ideas for that sort of thing. Anyways... Ceres is out of commission, but still this problem with the water here. And I want to say we want to go down this way, I think. I did not- oh, jeez, um, get me the frick out of here. Okay, didn't actually take as much damage as I thought I would've. Also, we're back to Speed Booster just being on, like, just running here, which is a much, much more preferred way of using it. And there's also this here. Water level is now decreased. And if we look over here, it's almost impossible to miss this here. That must be a hard thing to skip during uh, one or zero percent runs there. I'm not really sure how you would exactly skip over that. Because, yeah, if you don't know about this game, um, I don't think I can go down that way, can I? Or, actually, I can. I don't think this does anything for us here, no. Um, yeah, major collectible items in this game, like major suit upgrades and stuff, they don't actually count towards your, um, like, suit upgrades or any, or like your... They don't actually count towards, like, um... Of course there had to be a freaking block there preventing that idea. <laughs> um, major suit upgrades don't count towards completion purposes, which is definitely interesting, I think. Um... Yeah, this is Speed Booster, that's what I thought. So, the only things that count for, per, like, percentages in this game are the, um, missiles and such. Like, missiles and energy tanks and power bombs and such. So. Anyways, there is something down here, as we can see on our map, and, uh, we actually can't do a thing about this because, believe it or not... That's a power bomb block. I would have liked more health from that guy, but we're almost through this area anyway, so that's something. Man, it doesn't feel like we've been live for like an hour and a half already. It's kind of wild actually thinking that. But the areas themselves, once you kind of. The, the beginning of the game is a little slow, but once the areas get going, they go by pretty fast, so. So, Ceres had been infected by the X2. Well, as a result, you recovered another ability. This rate, you may be able to face the SAX yet. That's still a ways off. Headquarters has more support data. This time, it's a missile upgrade. Desperately need this, but the data room here is sealed with a level 4 lock, so the highest security lock. Let's avoid opening sensitive areas unless it's necessary. 
Also, the route to the data room in Sector 2 is blocked by the still more SAX activity. I don't know. Deliberate activity pattern, as if it's blocking your recovery initially. Same as this looks like your best option is the download in Sector 3, EYR. You'll find the Pyre data room on your map after using a nav room there. Alright, let's head for Sector 3 then. Yeah, so... No more elevator cutscenes for a while, I think. Hope everyone else is having a good night here. It's definitely fun to kind of go back to one of your favorite games, so... My day's been kind of hit or miss otherwise. It was kind of a boring workday, and... I probably did more arguing with others on Discords for more of the day than I care to admit, but... Sometimes it just happens, I guess. Thankfully, the X have not invaded this area yet. The data room here is sealed by another security hatch. In order to download, you must find the security door, and yeah, yeah, yeah. This may allow the AX and the X parasites into the area. We're left with no choice. Your recovery, uh, yeah. We get what we mean. Be careful, Samus. You'll see very violent organisms here. And avoid the ultra-heated areas. Your suit can't take much high temperatures yet, but we're working on a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super missile data will be ready. That is... Oh, I cannot wait for that. Alright. Let us go open some more hatches. And sure, I'll use this as well. We already have... We already have 95 of the game's 250 missiles already, although granted we don't have any power bombs yet, and let's be honest, when we get those, there's almost just as many of those damn things as well. And thanks, Grandson Brambo. Metroid definitely... Metroid can definitely be very nice to kind of help with that, and I can't do a thing about that there. This, I want to say, is... that speed booster. I want to say there's a secret down below here as well, I thought. Am I right about that? Uh, there is a secret down below, but it's on the other side of that wall, actually. This is a stupid idea because... Oh, that actually worked. I didn't think that door was open there. Huh. Okay. Let's get... There's a secret here, yeah, I was gonna say. Let's get the thing that's here. Yeah, most people don't. In fact, I think that might be the first time I've done something like that as well, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I'll show you kind of what you're intended to do. I did, I'm actually kind of surprised that that worked as well as it did myself. First and foremost, there's gonna be some of these guys here. Did you really have to do that? Can you guys all like die, please? That's also not what I meant to do there, either. Neither was that. Come on. I can get way higher speeds off of this. There we go. That's what I meant. And I had to get stopped by that. Okay, no. In all seriousness... 
also not what I meant to do there. You're intended to go under this guy, open up this hatch here, and get a speed boost going from here. Um, I don't remember what's up above here, though. There's another speed booster thing here, but... be something blocking me from this upper path here because I feel like you're not allowed to go this way yet looks like it would be very convenient if you could yes okay that's what I thought I think there's I think this is like the hardest part of a 0% run here besides some of the bosses, because there's an item here that's like, really big pain in the ass to try and skip. Uh, by the way, there's a power bomb thing in this wall here, yeah. Man, I believe I'm gonna wanna go this way here. I can kill these things with charge shots, I don't know why I'm not doing that. Hitting this guy with the extent of the blast there. There we go. Well, the SAX was in this area already. Yeah, this missile here. There is an easy way to skip that. I just don't remember how. Apparently, it might also be possible to do like a ridiculous shine spark and get through this thing here but you have to be basically even more than frame perfect to do that it's really ridiculous kind of how precise you have to be to do that all I can say is that I've never personally done a 1 or 0% run of this game and I'm probably not going to but you know what I can say? Super Missiles, this is the best version of these items in any Metroid game, period. Some may miss that they... When, uh, that didn't sound good. Some may miss when the Super Missiles, like, were separate than the regular Missiles. I can get why some people may not like that they stack in this game. I don't care because it's just straight up our Missiles do a shit ton more damage. And you get a billion of them in this damn game. Well, this room's no longer nice looking. I don't want to deal with this. You know what else I don't want to deal with? These guys. You see why the super missiles kick so much ass in this game? Missile tank, very nice, and... Time to recharge here. Yeah, we have 110 super missiles, and they'll basically be one-shotting stuff pretty near from now until the rest of the game. <laughs> oh man, this game is definitely a hoot and a half. Alright. Let's do this. I'm not sure how ready I am for this. So we got ourselves a security robot. This is one of the trickier fights in the game, in my honest opinion. I remember this fight giving me a lot of trouble when I first played this game. I know you want to be, like... That actually got a lot of hits on him there. I know you want to be standing, like, right under the... Or, like, right above the bombs when they come out so you're not hurt by the fire there. At least that's what I like doing there. 
that was actually a lot of good hits there, too. This guy must not have too much health left now, I would say. Oh, nice. Got him. And I got hit bouncing downward there. I think I only took, like, two hits through most of that fight. Maybe three hits. I don't really remember. In my Let's Play, for some reason, I ended up going getting through that without being damaged. And I don't know how. Because that fight can... That fight can be a lot more annoying when you don't know what you're doing. I know that it's like a... Well, no crap statement. Also, screw attack blocks. I know it's some, some it's like a no well no shit thing to say, but also I want to see more of the area up there because okay those are also screw attack there. I want to say it might be possible to get this here, actually. Yeah, it's definitely possible to get a speed booster going here. Um, let's try it here. Yep. Easy missile. Another thing here, which I don't think is... I don't think this is the way out of how you're intended to get this energy tank either. You can get this a bunch of different ways, because you can break a lot of the ground kind of in this area. There's a steel beam kind of below me here. Yeah, you can break all these with bombs here. It's, it's a very dynamic missile here that gives you a lot of ways so you can get that. So, very nice. Actually not gonna save here just because we always have a save room at the start of a new area as well. I see that you've encountered a rogue security robot. You may destroy it if you meet it again. Your safety is vital. But as your brief level two security locks are released, so sectors five and six are open. It means those sectors have likely been infiltrated by X. They're much harder to stop than we initially suspected. Sector five arc is sub zero. You're still susceptible to cold. So you'll take damage if you set even if you even set foot in there. Meantime, blah blah blah. So we have this transmission, we can download it, but the X have destroyed all the data rooms you've used so far. I no longer doubt their capacity for critical thought. Have to use the data room in the ne uh, nocturnal habitat. <laughs> Let us head to Sector 6 after this. Yes, our objective is in fact clear. Tread lightly, Samus, you're the only one who can do this, and the X may be much more dangerous than we know. I think this is a pretty fun sector coming up here. Ooh. Does Samus suspect anything? No, I do not think so. Good, monitor her closely. Affirmative, out. That... Hmm. That is something. Also, I love that we now have speed booster here. We can just get through this way, way faster and easier. Anyways, welcome down to Sector 6, Nocturnal. Various suit data is here from headquarters, get moving to the data room, but there's a problem. 
Acts from the Sub-Zero Sector are in Sector 6, and they... Being changed by the cold, if you absorb one, you'll be frozen from within. This seems like a deliberate thing. Once you download the various suit modification, you'll be out of danger. Just be extremely careful until then. This is actually a pretty fun part of the game here. They're hunting you actively now, Samus. And this area is very dark. Proceed with extreme caution. I always remember finding this one to be this a pretty fun part of the game here. I don't need that, so... And there is something down here, I think. Actually, maybe not here. So we know that there's... A blue X that can give us a lot of problems if we run into it. There we go. And starting here, this is where the fun begins. So we can stun these blue X's here, and if we don't, then they'll kind of relentlessly pursue us and try and do a lot of damage to us. Um, this area can be pretty confusing here. I think this should be a fun, a fine room to go through here. Uh, <laughs> if I don't want to be dealing with this bull crap. This was a bad idea coming here early. Why did I even remotely consider this idea here? All this for one missile here. And even a fake missile at that, no. That may have been a fake, but there's a real one here. So I just made this extremely difficult on myself here. Because I don't know if we're going to be able to get an air tank to heal off the damage I just took here. Yeah, this is going to suck ass here. Oh, Yeah, I'm not... 37 energy. 37 energy. Uh, shoot. <laughs> One hit and I'm as good as dead from anything in this game here. Um, with that bowl of energy there. I need to make my way back to a save room here no matter what. Or like a recharge room here. Normally I would not even think about this, but uh... Oh jeez. Actually I can get some health back here at least. Won't be as in as critical of danger here in the recharge rooms here. I don't know how we lived that there. <laughs> That was a very bold idea for me to go through that room. I've definitely been doing a lot of bold things for most of this. Also, what does it say on the monitor here? I guess that's just supposed to be the signals for missiles and... I always read that as, like, an upside-down T and an O, like, an upside-down 2, T-O. I don't know, I, it's weird. I guess that is just supposed to signify health and missiles, because that is what it is, but... I don't know, it's just always kind of derpy-looking. Anyways, let us not do what I did before there. Um, this area here, I don't think we can do anything with right now. <laughs> nope, not even chancing that. There is a, a thing here for speed booster, but... Yeah, I can't do anything about that and won't be able to do anything about that for a long time. And here's an evil trap, but I love it anyway. <laughs> There's just a guy there. So let me through here, please. Yeah, Metroid Fusion. Oh, for God's sake, really. 
Um, what is through? Okay, this I think is like a return trip area. Fusion's a pretty short game. I mean, it's... I, I say it's short, and it's still longer than both Super Metroid and Zero Mission, but... It isn't really that, that long of a game otherwise. It's also not really that many, like... Missiles or anything along this pathway here. Also, shoot. Oh, come on, really? Fine, fine, I'll take a hit here, because I apparently need to. And I learned the importance of this area for my Let's Play. And what not to do in this next part. This area is very vivid in my memory. <laughs> health recharge room here, I think, though, otherwise. Here's an energy tank, and we got one of these looking rooms here. Not really the best of signs here. Oh man, getting... <laughs> getting war flashbacks when I let's played this game. So of course I get an energy tank now after I said that it would be nice to have one of those earlier. Definitely a really great part of that part of this game here. So, uh, I wanted to demonstrate kind of what the SAX was doing in this area here, and I knew that this part was kind of here. So I headed down here, and uh, this also crumbled here, and I landed flat in front of the SAX. It went over about as well as you would expect it did. I can see if I can find that moment here. Um, give me a second here. There are some. F-bombs, I guess just keep that in mind, although I, c I guess I could find, like, a censored version of that, not that I really care too much, um... Hold on a second, I can get this here... So, uh, this is something that happened. <laughs> Playing power bombs, I see. What? You know what? Oh, shoot! No! 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 I am freaking dead! I am freaking dead! No! 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 What? I had no idea her ice beam did that much damage. Yeah, that was in fact a thing. Anyways... Yeah, so, that I think is the first time I've ever been really chased by the SAX at a time before I've ever had various suits. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I wasn't ex I wasn't really expecting what happened to happen. There's definitely something there. Anyways. There's a secret in this area here. Where the Fudgeo is, of course. Come on. Fine, fine, I'll move this way for like three seconds so that these X Actually I wanna I do wanna head back here. I know that Okay. There we go. I knew there was a secret in this area. to bet that the thing is somewhere up above here. That's another secret I feel like people aren't gonna easily find. Uh, I want to point out we have over half the missiles in the game, by the way. In case anyone was wondering about that. I think this might be the last sector we play in the game. I honestly wouldn't mind playing a little bit longer, but, I mean, we are kind of up at the two-hour mark here, which is usually how long I like to stream these games. And yeah, all those eyes for the rest of the game now only take one missile, so... Very, very great upgrade of the super missile. And that was uh, definitely something. And we have a very weird and kind of creepy boss here. I'm not the biggest fan of this guy, personally. Basically just a giant ass ex-parasite here. And I guess we can only use hard shots on this guy here. Just fine by me, because it's usually my, like, ghost way of dealing with a lot of things. And, of course, it splits into one of the smaller variants here. That guy's not too bad, but he can be a little hit or miss, I guess, sometimes. I say that, and I'm taking a lot by falling in the water. So, man, is this freaking... X core here, not dying here. For doing all that, we do get in. We do in fact get the various suit here. And I gotta say, this is one of Samus's ugliest suits. I am sorry to all you Haxorus fans out there, but I am not a big Chartreuse fan. I guess that's worth mentioning a little bit. Is that um. Metroid Prime on GameCube also gave you the option to use the fusion suit, and um, if you had both these games and could link the two games with Game Boy, Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance GameCube link cable. Um, I have the cable, but I never actually owned a cart of this game. Hey, buddy, heal me, babe. I'm never gonna say that again, but it's. <laughs> Guys, sure love healing here. And that guy just took off running there. Yeah, the X uh, know we can heal off ice now, and they're a lot more intelligent to that. It's a legitimately great moment in this game that I don't think people talk- Well, I've I seen the odd person talk about it, but yeah, the the cold ice, they think that they can touch us now, and then they realize that once we heal from it, they're not that helpful to- They're like, they- 
are running away from us now. If we want to eat cold, then... Uh, we actually have to stun them first and touch them. It's a really great, quiet moment in this game. Anyways, I believe that's also everything for this bottom half of the sector as well. Like, I'm almost positive this is pretty much all the missiles in, like, the bottom half of the sector here. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way of wording it there. It's going from prey to predator there. And I hope you like this bottom half of the sector because we never ever have to come back here again. Um, I don't think there's anything else we can really get here. Most of this way here pretty much requires screw attack. Like, there's... This is a screw attack block here and it's basically blocking a straightaway that you need. Because the wall to your left is a uh, speed booster, and the wall to the right is a bunch of optional speed booster stuff. Yeah, we will not be able to do this for a very long time. In fact, I want to say that's, like, one of the last things we do in this entire game, if I remember right. Anyways... I'm getting a spam email from Canada Post, except it's not, it's a... spammer. Because they're always the same, like, oh yeah, we missed your delivery, uh, there's a late fee of, like, $2.60, uh, send us money here, even though that's not how the mail system works. Anyways, um... I think let's hear the briefing from Adam and then let's probably call that a stream, I think. I think this is probably a good stopping point for now. How did that X download the various suit data? This doesn't seem to make any sense at all. Unless the X unless the X have the ability to process data organically. At any rate, you have the very suit. Now you can be protected from extreme temperatures. More importantly, the SAX will no longer be able to freeze you, so you can escape easier. You're still too weak, that thing is too much for you. I currently have no way of damaging it, but my simulations indicate that a penetrating weapon like the plasma beam might work. Developing modification data will take headquarters some time, though. There's also a chance that you may be able to restore your plasma beam by absorbing a large core X, as you did with the charge beam function. As for restoring ice beam functionality, I doubt it. Your current cellular makeup would reject that addition, therefore headquarters has developed an ice missile upgrade. So a freezing effect to your missiles, it will help. Go to Sector 5 Arctic for the download. Yeah, my objective's clear. You know what, actually, um... You know what, yeah, let's keep going with this stream here for a little bit. I'm fine with doing the next part of the game here, just because I know what it is, and I generally like the next part of the game quite a bit, so... I'm fine with going a little bit longer, why not? This is also not the sector I wanted to go into at all. <laughs> Normally, I would kind of like to call my streams around this time, but you know what? I mean, why not go a little bit longer here? As you said, we were kind of going at this game at a pretty good pace here, so... And 
this is the last new sector in the game that we have yet to go to. And I just accidentally reset my chat box on stream. Oh well. What do you gotta say about this Navrum nah, here? Need to download the data, but as you might expect, the data room is secured by a level 3 security hatch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Know what to do? Go for it. I have a recharge room that I don't need here. Some yellow doors, which I cannot do a thing about, and that always trips me up every time I go through this dang way. Right, this is for some reason a missile wall here. is pretty tough to put down. I know when Dread comes out, I'm definitely not putting that down for a while that day. Kind of hate how I have to work that morning, but it's also Canadian Thanksgiving, so after that, then I'll be able to take some good old R&R for most of that weekend. Now we can step forth in here and not be worried about Ice damage, which is very nice. And we don't have the security thing for that, so... Also, can't do a thing about that either. Or that there. Yeah, I think I know which moment you're talking about there. I don't know why this area here... Well, actually, I guess I get why that area exists there, but still... I can't do anything there. Because it is pretty linear right now. here, but I don't think... I don't think we can get the thing in that area there. I want to say that's for a missile later on. And yeah, there's a power bomb spot below there. And... All the way over this way leads you to a security room. I'm gonna take these headphones off right now. I'm not actually using the headphones for anything, so. Yeah, now we can open the level 3 hatches. We have another save room here, and I think we're pretty much good to mostly leave this area. Well, actually, I need to get the ice missiles first, but yeah. Kind of forgot that was what our main objective here was to do, was to come down here and get the missiles. I don't think... No, we can't do anything with that there yet. Now we can go through this area. I 
Ice effect added to missiles. Use it to freeze enemies. Not bad, not bad. Um... Um, there are some things in this area I would like, such as, if we head up this way, it's another of these asshole things here. Okay, come on, I know there's a freaking energy tank in this room here. Oh, here we go. There we go. We have a lot of energy tanks already. It's kind of impressive. <laughs> There's also a hidden area over here that... Unlike the last, like, shaft that I was able to get up with wall jumping, this one I'm almost positive we cannot even come close to. We'll have to keep this area in mind. Yeah, it probably would have been pretty mean if they didn't. And we also have to loop all the way around again too, because the sector is also just weird like that. Or actually, no, we don't loop back around. We can't loop back that way. That's what we do, right. And from here, I think I just go this way, I believe. Yes, because now, now that I have ice missiles... I think I can get here from the right. Could I have gotten anything for going through this area with the... No. Anything with that there. Let us head through here. That was definitely ominous, ominous looking there. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, I hope that thing is also friendly. This room is also very different in its layout now, too. This room always confused me with its secret, because there is a missile, I think, here. I always just always forget where it's at for some reason. It's not here, is it? Nope, I need power bombs for it. Never mind. It's so weird. You need power bombs, yet that the power the item in this area is a missile, which is really weird. That's not pretty sounding. Emergency in sector three. Definitely recommend saving because there's definitely some ship going down here. No pun intended. What are you gonna say here, Adam? Emergency in Sector 3. The area could melt down. It seems the main boiler is cooling unit is malfunctioning. This could easily destroy the entire research station as it would likely trigger the auto destruct explosives. 
Of course, there's also just most systems in down. Again, we know who to blame. The SAX must have hacked in the system. Control file, what impressive intelligent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little time. Hurry to Sector 3. Come on, there's no time to waste. I think I remember one of my playthroughs, um, I think I did have a little bit of almost like a jump scare one time when I got to this part, because you don't know what's coming and then suddenly, suddenly there's just a huge explosion that you gotta take care of. Unfortunately, Adam doesn't bombard you with text during this here. Really? Come on. I don't know why I'm doing this to... Whatever. Freeze these things now, which is nice. Okay, main boiler room, yeah, it's down below here. We will not be going to that right path for a very long time, so get used to that. Shoot! Oh, Jesus. This isn't good. Yeah, actually, from the looks of things, I don't think there's any collectibles really at this part of the game, although I can kind of see why, given that we're under very intense circumstances right now. And I think we're pretty near at the boiler room here. I like how they also just have, like, a voice announcer to let you know how long it'll be till the ship explodes. Because if a main boiler's melting, you'd think that it wouldn't just be a complete set in stone time, you know? I think it could happen at just about any minute now. But we are in the main breaker now. Seems like we made it here. Alright, let's see what we got for the main boiler controls. We have just over half our time here. With some random scientists here. It's just one of these stupid things. There's a trend whenever you find one of these here, and I'll point it out after we fight one of these, after we defeat this thing here. And you might be able to notice, uh, every time you get a beam upgrade, it'll always be from one of these things here. So in this case, while we have an explosion going off here, we can get the wide beam, which is basically the spacer of this game. Shut this garbage down. <laughs> I also do really like the look of the wide beam in this game, though. As well as kind of the other beams we'll be getting here going forward. I don't know, just something about it, like, I always thought it looked really, really cool. Yeah, the X can... The X can... Definitely just imitate other humans. Alright. 
There is something else kind of in that area there, but it's not something we can get for a good while. So I think we need both. Yeah, we need, actually we need lot, like gravity suit and power bombs for that, I believe. And I guess I could get, I think there's one missile we can get in this area here, but there's a lot more to this area that we're not able to kind of get yet. What item do we need to get through here? Or actually, we can get through here. I don't think we're able to get much of anything in this area for right now, though. Yeah, I'm, go I'm gonna hold off on that for the time being, because we will need power bombs eventually. Otherwise, we, sh we might have most of the things we would need to get through that, because I know we need... I I'm remembering back to that area there, and I'm pretty sure we need... Uh um, what am I thinking of here? I'm pretty sure we need, like, speed booster and a few other things that we would already have by this point. Um, yeah, I think this is the way I need to go here. Yeah, I should be able to get out from here, I think. Yes. All right. I think that is going to do it for this stream, though, just because I, I kind of wanted to play at least up to this point here, because I did feel like that was a good stopping point there. I don't know exactly how far we are in the game. I'd say probably close to the halfway mark, maybe. I don't... F I highly doubt we'll finish this game next stream, because there's a very long backtrack segment in this game, but... Um... Yeah, we definitely did make a lot of progress here. We have over half the missiles, but they're also not the only collectible in this game, as you can clearly see. So, that's a nice... I think this is a pretty nice stopping point. We also got over half, like, half the hatches already, so that's definitely a good stopping point, I think. Um, yeah, I will be back with this game on, uh... I'll be back with this game on um, uh, Thursday as well, because I am going to try and get this done before Dread comes out, but I, I don't think this will take me that many streams total, probably three, maybe four, but I'm thinking ugh, we'll have to see whenever, however far we are by the end of tomorrow, or by the end of Thursday's stream, but yeah, and then Saturday, I'm not too sure what we, we're going to be doing, but I think I have an idea on it. Um, I think I have a good raid target that we're going to try and raid here tonight, so, um, let's go with, um, and... Let's go with uh, let's go with the, that for the hashtag there. Um, we're gonna raid. Um, I see uh, Mega Freak Four Hundred playing Mario Party Two, which is actually a game I've been considering streaming again at some point. So let's go raid Mega there, and yeah, we'll be back with this game here in a couple days time. So thanks everyone for kind of tuning in and. I'll see you guys for that then. I'm also the same type of idiot who has to save multiple times, so thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys for that then. Peace out.